<laughs> right, hey, what up, guys? I have bumped into a fellow YouTuber, Land Rover. Ha <laughs> ha! Flavor for Raver. We're up to misbehavior. <laughs> right, cool. Anywho, right, that wasn't the reason why you're here. This is, let me get a bit. Oh, dear. Because it's going to be an interesting weekend. Right. And this one is about the Massine 12 slash 1200 Master Vault Tailor Made Energy Power Inverter. Who knows how I picked up the term or well, the dialect of inverter? If anyone knows what sort of um, accent that is, let me know. I don't know how I picked that one up. Weird. Right. Anywho, before we get to things. All right. If you don't know what you're doing with these, leave these alone. That end is the silly end. Right? I say silly because you will go all silly if you come into contact with that one. When these are running, that will kick out about 200, free, well, yeah, 230. It sounds a bit better than that, didn't it? But 220, 230 volt on there. Right. Input on these, and you, I haven't exactly got this uh, camera set yet. If you see how thick these are, so it's like 12 volt in, I think. It's 12 to 24 volt in. I haven't looked at the schematics of this. Well, that's actually kind of a lie. I have, but anywho. So as I said, this one's Curtsy Lamb Raver, who I bumped into today, and it's this sort of master valve, uh, yeah, mass sign 12 over 1200 that we're going to be looking at. <laughs> right, I'm not going to be repairing it today, um, because I've got a few problems that I need to actually overcome with this. And... Yeah, I just didn't like the idea about having a whacking great battery up here. Um, especially when there's no provisions for it. So I'm going to have to get my um, tinglies into gear over what to do about that. Oh, I also have quite toothache going on at the minute. A split bottom tooth. Which is not good. Ooh. But that isn't the reason why you're here. <laughs> this is alright but I'll tell you something right? I was thinking I might need the workbench for this one but hopefully I don't alright hopefully this is a really simple one and having a simple shuffle around here might mean I can carry out a repair here that would be awesome Otherwise, I have to start messing with the uh, workbench again. Well, I've got to anyway, do you know what I mean? Got to start dealing with the workbench. And that's going to take the best part of a day to sort that one out. Or a day or two. So, I'd rather try to get this one sorted here. And what with Lamb Ravers... Um, well, that's going to be interesting because we'll have to do testing on that outside just one problem I've got the battery charger here for it well that will be interesting so I think what we'll do is we'll have a primary look All right. if it needs any sort of overhauls done then that will be sort of a secondary assessment and a tertiary look over um, we'll probably come under the repair as well, but we'll, we'll have to see how it goes on that one. So that's the opening done here. You're all going to want to see inside it. And that's what we're going to get to in a minute. Let me just settle into this, because I posted a video for a couple of days now. And, just on this note, it's going to be a busy weekend here on this channel. Because I am indeed 
wink, wink, the man of action. Hmm. And I have an unboxing I've got to do. We'll cover that one in another video. We need to deal with this. So what we'll do is quickly skip. All right. Um, it'll only be a second here for me at least. Uh, well, for you rather. And uh, bleep. Then we'll get to it. So one minute. Right. Okay, so we're on with the Messine 12 1200 from Master Valve, the inverter. Alright, just a quick overview of them before I show you actually how easy these are to get into and potentially service. Right, now I might run into a problem with this one because of spanners, but we'll come to that. The whole purpose of these is really quite simple and this gives us an insight as well to where this come from. All right, inverters, these are designed to give you a mains output on the funny end from a 12 volt input, or 12, 24 or whatever the case may be. Right, so the idea being you're going to want a mains output from some sort of DC input. For all of you computer guys out there, it's basically the opposite of a computer power supply. It's essentially the opposite. In instead of putting 230 or 220, whatever mains voltage in, and getting 12 or whatever out, on this, you're putting DC into it of 12, 24 or whatever and getting mains AC out. So it's, it's the opposite way round. All right. And a whole variety of situations you would use these in. Anything from sort of solar panels you can do to, you know, sort of camping, if you've got a camper van or something like that, or a day van. And even with marine applications. This is the point I want to get to. Nanraver told me this was off a boat. And here we get our first insight as to what might be wrong with it. I'm suspecting water damage. If I, oh god, how am I going to do this? i just spin it round here. If you can see, well, that back plate is aluminium. Alright, and aluminium doesn't rust, but the rust has transferred onto it from something that has rusted. So I'm thinking suspected possible water damage. Alright, that's the key point. Now, even more interesting, I tried to remove, pick up my screwdriver, there's a fastener in there, if it will stay put, there's one in there, well trying to remove it ended up in something of a fail. So I'm probably going to have to dremel that one out. You know when you have a rusted, uh, a rusted fastener such as a Phillips screw in this case. When it rusted it strips the head off it so you can't get the damn thing out. Luckily I didn't have to. It probably could be left there. But any whom I think I might try and remove it if I have the time permitting. Right. Anyway, let's just quickly pause because I'm going to tell you roughly how these inverters work. As I've had the sort of time to draw up a really crude circuit diagram. Have a quick look at that, shall we? Yeah. 
glug, glug, that's another beer gone. All right, one minute. On the board here, oh, ah, good, I need that as my pointer. Excellent. Ah, well done, me. On the board here, what you see is a basic circuit. Here's your sort of battery input. Right. Down here, you've also got ground. Right. Now it's worth noting, on here, there is provisions for one, but there wasn't any ground, uh, well, sort of ground wire there. Whether that's needed here, I, I, well, I would suspect it is, but there wasn't one actually on there. And I haven't looked at the full circuit schematic for the master valve. Right? This one, however, this schematic is only basic. So, oh, get off. Have our input to something that may or may not be fused. Right? And then we have what looks like a capacitor here and some sort of coil could be to limit inrush current but the main things that are going on is down to q1 and q2 these mosfets now the purpose of these is to induce switching so it's a sine wave so you want to create a sine wave which means switching this usually 50 to 60 uh, 50 to 60 hertz so hertz is the uh, well it's your sort of oscillations because as you well know with AC it's alternating current so these swap 50 to 60 times per second on the transformer coils that's the whole purpose of this so you're pulsing that at 50 60 times per second through your primary windings your secondary is going to have a higher amount of turns on it and that's then when you're going to get your output that's it essentially in a nutshell you see down here on the transformer body because this will be the metal frame around it there will usually be an earth strap on it there usually is and if you look here there is provisions for that so they do tend to be grounded on the output and that will be grounded usually to the metal frame of the transformer itself and also to the casing and then on the output you may or may not have fuse. In the case of the master valve, there's a thermal cut off on it. So there'll be some sort of thermal couple or thermal fuse and that could be pretty much anywhere within the circuitry. Somewhere I would have thought around here. 3T, 8T and 8T, that's the amount of turns on your primary. And on your secondary, there's 130 turns. You can get transformer calculators, and if I can find a decent one, it'll be in the description bar below. And again, these here are just essentially your MOSFET. Right. And that's basically it. I didn't put the values in, actually, for the resistors on that. But yeah, usually these will have resistors on it as well. So that's basically that. Really, in a nutshell, you sort of see how it kind of works. There are other channels that will go more into this than I care to in terms of this video. EV blog and obviously you all know Electroboom they do a much better job of probably explaining it than I will. But, yeah, I've still got the knowledge. 
Anywho, all right, so that's the basic overview of it. All right. What we will do now is show you how easy it is to get into these and the basic tools that you'll need. And actually, so far, this is a joy to open. And even better, the fasteners there all seem to be pretty easy. So there's nothing majorly complicated. The only drawback might be on the underside of this when it actually comes to r removing some of the other stuff. That might be a little bit more tricky. But all we have to do is just remove uh, eight fasteners from the bottom. What we will do is just quickly pause and then I'll show you really how easy it is to do. I think you'll like it. It's really easy to get into these things. Problem I might have though is I don't have spanners to hand. I'm going to have to work on that one. And anywho, I think it's time to get another beer on the go. So what we'll do is quickly pause it and we'll snap to and we'll get this thing open. Well, I've already removed the fasteners anyway. I'll just tell you which ones you need to remove. Let's get that done. The first fastener I need to remove is on a low voltage beer. So we'll get that done really easy using the lighter. Pop. There we go. When you hear the pop, release. Excellent. Uh -huh. The beer there. Just sort of set this one off to one side. And uh, we'll get another smoke on the go, I think. Because I've already done the heavy lifting about removing the fasteners on it. And I'll show you. Really easy, isn't it? Okay, right, cool. So, on here, if we can sort of move this one to the back this thing's going to slide around on, on this board and, and and that's fine all right luckily all you need to do is remove the top fasteners on the back you don't need to touch any of the bottom for now all right so those come out and they're put in that pot now we can turn our attention to the front, which is what you see here. Right. We have two fasteners up here and two down here. The first thing that you do is this plate. That just simply slides out. Really easy. That comes out and it gives you a very handy schematic there. Now, this introduces us to another interesting possibility with the fault of, of that, um, well, with that inverter, okay? Apparently down here, what you see, it says, is that SB hysteresis, SB power, low energy mode and standby mode. It's on the, if I can sort of show you it. Might not be very good. Then you have a, um, a connection on that, which looks like similar to an RJ45 connection for some reason, but that hooks up to a remote. But anywho, this just simply slides off. Really, really easy. You just set that off up there. Right? Excellent. This is fantastic. Now, this is even better because this top piece should, let me do it with one hand, should sort of lift up. 
you've got to be sort of careful with it. It should just lift up like so. And that's the lid off of it. And this is basically what now you have. Right? So the whole um, top end of the inverter is essentially now exposed. And this is why I'm thinking water damage. Luckily on the top though, whenever I put my damn pointer panel do, I know you can't see this very well, but you will do in a minute, because I'll show you. A few of the tracks do look a bit dirty and corroded. And I think, yeah, in fact, yeah, it is. It is. There's a few that actually do. Yeah, they're, they're damaged. That, that's water damage on there. That's water damage. Yeah, the tracks are corroded. That's going to be interesting. I will show you that. So it is water damage, as I thought. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting, that one. I might have to try and do something with that. Hmm, that is going to be interesting. Whether or not any of that cleans up, I don't know, but... Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, some of the PCB tracks are corroded on that one. What we'll do is I think we're going to have that board out of there. It is, as I suspected, water damaged. And it's Master Vault sign. 1500 V2 S0LD, I believe on there. So, luckily, actually, it's easy enough to get into it. Now, at the back end, you've got a ribbon cable there. Let's try and spin this around one handed. It's that ribbon cable. Now you've got to be really careful with that because the pins are super easy to bend on it. So you want to lift that out. Well, as you see, yeah, that's slightly bent, but you can get them back into shape. It might be a good idea to blue tack them. I don't have any of that, but well, not to hand. But as long as I'm careful, it should be all right. The other way would just be simply, by the looks of that, to carefully bend those plastic lugs in. There's four plastic lugs in that one. And then pull the, the thing out and rest it to one side, but it's actually probably easier to do that. These pins do bend super easy, so you have to be careful. I've just managed to bend them, but it's easy enough they'll go back. Failing that, you can just get hold of another block connector. And that should be easy enough to do, or a whole new ribbon for it. That's if they bend off, but I don't think it will. Failing that, I can always just solder in, but it should be fine. Hmm. Now what you'll see here, and I know this isn't very good at the minute, but I will alter the camera in a minute just so you can see it. All right. Phillips fastener here, one here, one here, and one here. There isn't one. Oh no, there is one under that board. So the board will have to come up then. You didn't see that just now. 
I'm winging it because I can't find a teardown manual for it. And to be honest with you, I didn't look. Sometimes with reverse engineering, you don't. But what I'll do is I'll just... Do I pause it or do I show you? How to, yeah, sorry, I'll show you. Luckily, I have a thin pair of needle nose grips here, needle nose pliers. So I'll just pause, get rid of this tab end, and the drink to be fair. Pause it, remove it, bend that connection back, and, and uh, chuck that back on there, I think. One minute. Right, okay. I'll remove this. And then what I'll do is I'll flip the camera around for you so you can see exactly uh, where this whole thing pretty much lies. That. But you have to bend these in, which is something of a nightmare in itself. Again, you've got to be super careful not to break that board. They will, if you're careful, will come out. So, there we are. We've got it. I've left a couple of lugs in there, but that's fine. So that is basically for your switch on it. What I will do... Bear with me, I'm going to straighten those pins on that. Straighten them back one minute. All right, cool. Bent that back. So what I'm going to do for now, just carefully going to reseat that. Back in there. Like so. And yeah, that's good enough. I'm happy with that. Now what we have, two fasteners at the back, two fasteners in the middle, and two at the front. Right. And there's a cable tie here. I may have to cut that, we'll see. What I'm going to do is quickly show you now in detail. Me. Right, so there you are. Okay. Two fasteners here, two here, and two at the front. Um yeah, that oh god. That plate goes over here, that slides in. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's over there, like so. And then the top, as we said, just slots over the top of that. So it's actually really quite easy. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to quickly knock these out and uh, we'll see what happens. Now, with this, this is going to be interesting and uh, it might have an issue with that because I don't have spanners to hand at the minute. I so strongly suspect these might well have to be disconnected. I'm certainly thinking of that unless I actually leave well, I might be able to yeah, just undo those. Yeah maybe and then pull the cabling through there. Yeah, maybe. That might be the best way. Don't know. I'll see. We'll see what happens. And uh, we'll go from there. One minute. Right, okay. This is interesting. It looks like I've got away very lucky then. I don't need spanners then. At least not for the moment. Using what size is that? 
It's a 13 mil socket. And it looks like. Yup, I'm able to loosen that. Yup, good enough. It sure does. Straight the bolt. What's that? That's dropped off. That's gonna be shit. One. Right, well, that was awkward. Anywho, I just got disturbed. 13 mil sockets removes the two retaining belts that hold. Oh, okay, right, so that was earthed on there. Excellent. Right, where was I? I've lost my place now. So, 13 mil, either a spanner or a socket. Ding ding, I didn't need to be doing that anywho. Removes the two retaining belts that hold your battery line in and your neutral in. Now we need to bang these screws out. I'm going to cheat a little bit to be fair. I have a cordless screwdriver. It should do the job just fine. Mind you, actually, I probably could do it with this. Oh no, that's going to be a nightmare. No, that's not going to work. So it is the cordless screwdriver. One minute. Right, cool. What we do? In there with cordless. gets these ones out. Excellent. And these should all be the same size. Oh, sharp. Right. I think this all might be in vain because Yeah, already I can see that there's, again, as previously said, massive liquid damage on that on that board. Don't know whether those tracks are going to be recoverable. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. These are all the same size. Good. So that can go in the second. In fact, no. Nah. All in the same part. And that one. And to remove those, what size was that? It was a Phillips one. Get into the top end of that. Now we can just set that one aside for now. Right, cool. Still isn't coming up. Well, that is going to be interesting. Hmm. So, is that case now where we have to remove that? We need to pull this out. Is that still stuck down? going on here. Yeah, I think that's going to be, it's going to be interesting. These might have to be cut and what we'll probably do is push that back on for now. Because I'm going to have to flip this over and remove those fasteners on the underside, I think. Right, 
I reckon that's what's going to have to happen. But yeah, it is liquid damaged already. That's what I can see. And yeah, we'll see what we can do with that, I think. We'll see. Wait one moment. Right, okay. So now we're going to turn our attention to the eight bolts on the underside. see how much of a problem that's going to be in just a moment. All of those fasteners have dropped out. They can go on the top. This, very quickly, is going to get interesting. Very. Pull this back over. Now that's loosening up a bit. Uh, that's much better, isn't it? Ah, uh, there we go. Alright, so I do need to extract that last one. That might be interesting one minute. Right, cool. So it does transpire then that you do have to undo the bolts on the underside. Right. Now you should be able to lift the whole thing out. Probably going to mean I have to take that back off again. But maybe not because no, nope, it's all stuck. Together. So what we're going to do then is we're going to lift the whole unit out, but I need to get now that block connector undone at the front. I'll show you all of this, anywho. Um, so I need my iFixit kit then, because it's a simple... Undo with that and disconnect. Those cables like so. and the block connector like that. Excellent. Now a whole lot should lift out, hopefully so. Let's give that a go. Does it? Aha! Ta-ha! That's what we want. That's got the whole lot. There we go. That's what we're talking about. And we can set the box aside. And now, that's the goodies. Goodies. Right, good. Now that we've got to that, now we have to start the probing and the teasing. This is where it's going to get fun. Yeah, I should. We'll turn that over and set that here. Excellent. Right. Now it's going to be clean up those terminals, I reckon, and tracking on it. And see what we get. I'm just put the lid on this for now. 
like so, so that we don't lose any of the bits. How good is that? Right. So now we've got something that looks like that. And that's all, looks a bit quite corroded. It all looks it. I think though, if we clean all that up, I reckon we might be in for a chance on that. I reckon. Right, okay, so now we're going to turn our attention to the eight bolts on the underside. see how much of a problem that's going to be in just a moment. All of those fasteners have dropped out. They can go on the top. This, very quickly, is going to get interesting. Very. Pull this back over. Now that's loosening up a bit. Uh, that's much better, isn't it? Ah, uh, there we go. Alright, so I do need to extract that last one. That might be interesting one minute. Right, cool. So it does transpire then that you do have to undo the bolts on the underside. Right. Now you should be able to lift the whole thing out. Probably going to mean I have to take that back off again. But maybe not because no, nope, it's all stuck. Together. So what we're going to do then is we're going to lift the whole unit out, but I need to get now that block connector undone at the front. I'll show you all of this, anywho. Um, so I need my iFixit kit then, because it's a simple... Undo with that. Disconnect. Those cables. Like so. Block connector. Like that. Excellent. Now, the whole lot should lift up, hopefully so. Let's give that a go. Does it? Aha! Ta-ha! That's what we want. That's got the whole lot. There we go. That's what we're talking about. And we can set the box aside. And now, that's the goodies. Goodies. Right, good. Now that we've got to that, now we have to start the probing and the teasing. This is where it's going to get fun. I should. Turn that over and set that here. Excellent. Right. Now it's going to be clean up those terminals, I reckon, and tracking on it. Let's see 
what we got. I'm just putting the lid in this enamel. Like so, so we don't lose any of the bits. How good is that? Right. So now we've got something that looks like that. And that's all, the looks of it, quite corroded. It all looks it. I think, though, if we clean all that up, I reckon we might be in for a chance on that. I reckon. Right, anywho, so we got the whole thing out. And there is, as you see, evidence of quite a lot of corrosion. That was my strongest suspicion on this, which is liquid damage. Now, a lot of these tracks seem to be okay, or at least repairable, and might well clean up just fine. So I think this is definitely fixable. And a lot of that might well scrub off with a little bit of isopropanol alcohol and a stiff brush. I think we might be able to get a lot of that crud off of there. I think we might well have a go at that. So I'm confident that this is definitely fixable. Confident. See? Oh, that there. See it. Yeah, that's coming off. So I reckon a little bit of isopropanol alcohol on that. I might be able to sort some of that out. There are what looks like a few damaged tracks, but... Again, that just could be a bit of surface corrosion on it. Hmm. Interesting. Let's flip the thing over. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's liquid damaged all right. It certainly is. Uh, all of the insides seem to potentially be okay. Uh, it's difficult to say, isn't it? I think what I'm going to do is have a, a tease and poke around with this. I mean, there's a hell of a lot going on. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see what's going on with that. It would be nice to get this fixed up for Lamb Raver. Certainly would. But there is hope. There certainly is. Right, well, I'm going to snap to then and I'm going to crack on with that. And we'll see what I come back to.